What's up everyone? Man, it feels good to say that again after so long. This is my first video of the year after being terminated in December, so forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty here. Anyways, to those of you who might recognize my voice, let this video serve as a message that I'm back, and assuming everything goes according to plan, I'm about to kick off several new series of homebrew tutorial content here on the YouTube platform. Funnily enough, it's actually been the old PlayStation 3 of all things, which has got me feeling more motivated and inspired than ever before to get back to creating homebrew tutorial content. Even though the PlayStation 3 launched way back in 2006, it's still right up there as one of my favourite consoles of all time. So I've made sure to follow the PS3 scene very closely to learn about the new capabilities and features being unlocked as the years go by. Some of you may remember my PS3 exploit tutorial videos, which detailed the release of some of the most groundbreaking exploits in the PS3 scene since 2011 when Sony released firmware 3.56, which patched the ability to install custom firmware the easiest soft mod way. It was in November of 2017 that the first PS3 exploit release came out. PS3 exploit utilized a WebKit exploit, and it made it possible for PS3 systems which were compatible with custom firmware so that is to say all fat PS3 models and all early slim models which had left the factory running firmware 3.56 or lower to be able to install custom firmware again even if they were running the latest firmware versions. Up until this time a PS3 system needed to be on firmware 3.55 or lower to be able to install custom firmware, otherwise a hardware flashing kit could be used to downgrade the firmware, but this was too pricey or complicated for most users. So the original PS3 exploit was an awesome release, it certainly helped breathe a lot of new life into the PS3 scene, and it helped a lot of users with higher firmware, fat, and original slim PS3s to get custom firmware. So then a few months later, in March of 2018, the PS3 exploit team did the unthinkable and released PS3 exploit version 3, aka Han, or Ethanol. This release supported users who owned the previously unhackable PS3 hardware, such as the later 3000 model slims or the final super slim revisions of the PS3. It gave these systems the ability to run PS1 and PS2 game backups, as well as the majority of the PlayStation 3 library, basically everything that was sold over the PlayStation Store and available in .pkg format was playable. There was even support for PSP game backups, but the compatibility was not the greatest. Although using Han was fairly complicated when compared to how easy it was to run custom firmware, this was the first time that these later PS3 models were able to run any meaningful exploits at all. So PS3 exploit version 3 or Han was still an incredible release which helped a lot of people get more out of their hardware. Loads of people had been waiting for many years to be able to hack their model of PS3, so Han definitely made a lot of people happy in that regard. The biggest catch with Han was that it only really enabled re-signed .pkg game backups to be launched. There was no support at all possible for native PlayStation 3 homebrew. This meant that popular releases like Multiman and most mod menus, things of that nature, all of this PS3 homebrew was out of reach for these systems. And that's how things stayed for the next 5 months until October of 2018 when Sony eventually released firmware 4.83 and the 4.83 firmware update actually stopped the PS3 exploits from working. So this prevented the unlucky users who only had access to PS3 running the highest possible firmware versions from being able to use the PS3 exploit to unlock the true potential of their systems. However, just recently, the PS3 scene has started to pop off again, and since I have so much love for the PlayStation 3, I just had to get back into creating content again to cover these latest releases. So as you may know, in February this year, Sony also released 4.84 firmware for the PlayStation 3. And then in the very next month of March, there was quite an interesting release dubbed Hybrid Firmware. Now Hybrid Firmware is a release which can be installed on any PlayStation 3 model and over the top of any official firmware version. And the only thing that this modified, or hybrid firmware essentially does, is bring back the patched webkit from official firmware 4.82 which was the entry point used for PS3 exploit. The WebKit entry which enabled PS3 exploit to work was removed in firmware 4.83 and above, which made the Han exploit unreachable. So thanks to the hybrid firmware release, PlayStation 3s which had been updated to 4.83 or 4.84 firmware were able to use the PS3 exploit to either install custom firmware or use Han depending on the model of the PlayStation 3. 
So the hybrid firmware is a very useful release as it restores access to the PS3 exploits on all PS3 systems again, even those running the latest firmware. However, just in the past few days, another major breakthrough has been released, and this is easily the biggest breakthrough in the PlayStation 3 scene since the original PS3 exploit releases. So the release which has got me so excited is called PS3 Hen, released by a team of anonymous developers, Hen being short for Homebrew Enabler, just like the Hen terminology used in the PlayStation 4 Homebrew scene. PS3 Hen brings a bunch of new features to the table, most importantly perhaps, for the first time, the later PS3 models which are unable to install custom firmware will finally be able to run PlayStation 3 Homebrew thanks to PS3 Hen. Also included is the ability to work with PlayStation 1 ISO files and burn discs, the ability to run PlayStation 3 backups in folder format, and support for boot plugins. And on the media side of the system, there's Blu-ray disc ISO support, Blu-ray and DVD region patches, and Synavia DRM patches. As if all of those features weren't enough, just yesterday the developer Escort Chu from the PS3 exploit team announced version 2 of PS3 Hen, which has added support for PlayStation 3 ISO files too, as well as improving exploit stability. And the features I've listed just now are just scratching the surface. The list really is quite extensive, so I'll be sure to link to the release topics on the website psxplace.com, which is one of the best PS3 scene community resources by the way, and I definitely recommend checking them out if you're interested in these releases, or PlayStation 3 Homebrew in general. Similar to how Han worked, PS3 Hen needs to be run once after each reboot. If you use PS3 Hen to install Homebrew onto your PlayStation 3, it will of course remain on the console, but it won't be able to launch until PS3 Hen is running. So you could think of PS3 Hen as like Han on steroids. It's bound to be exciting for everyone who isn't able to install custom firmware to finally be able to run PlayStation 3 Homebrew. And it even brings a bunch of new features to the table that had previously not been included in custom firmware. Some of the most exciting things for people who are new to PS3 Homebrew to install will be RetroArch. So RetroArch has cores for many different retro systems like the NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Sega consoles like the Mega Drive or Genesis, Master System, as well as Atari and you know arcade MAME cores as well. RetroArch makes it possible for your PlayStation 3 to be able to run thousands of retro games. Another type of homebrew you'll want to install will be the backup managers. These were previously only available for use on systems running custom firmware. So these are the releases like Multiman, Mana Guns, Iris Manager. These are all at least partially supported with PS3 Hen, and they can be used to do things like launching PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 game backups. Now it's definitely worth noting that uh, all homebrew up until this point has been designed to run on custom firmware, and since PS3 Hen doesn't quite give us the same level of access as custom firmware does, there are some incompatibilities with some of these releases. So for example, I'm hearing that PS3 Hen may not have peak and poke support, which would mean that Multiman can't use a USB hard drive like it can on custom firmware. Now I didn't actually confirm this myself yet, but I'll be testing all of this and a bunch more getting my hands dirty for the next few days before I get my tutorial style content uploaded. Another fun type of content you'll be able to install will be homebrew games. They'll all become playable, of course. And since the PlayStation 3 scene has been around for over a decade now, there's actually a decent number of these released. I'll be sure to link to Brewology's homebrew game section so you can take a look and download these homebrew game releases if you're interested. Also, PS3 Hen will allow systems to run applications with no PSN patches. Now, those are basically tweaked versions of stock official PlayStation 3 apps. Things like YouTube, Twitch, Netflix, Crunchyroll, and Hulu, which bypass the PlayStation Network check so that you can use them without the fear of being banned at all. Now, even though PS3 Hen was released by anonymous developers, I feel we've got to take a moment to give special thanks to all of the major PS3 scene developers, people like Habib, Escort Jew, and the entire PS3 exploit team. I'll leave a list of some of the more prominent names in the video description, apologies to anyone I miss, but seriously, major props and appreciation to all of the recent active PlayStation 3 developers. I'll be creating a brand new series of PlayStation 3 content focusing on the different installation pathways for new users looking to get into installing PS3 Hen on their consoles, as well as recapping some of my older PS3 tutorial content 
by going over how to install and use some of the best PS3 homebrew releases. So we'll take a look at things like multi-man and rebug custom firmware again, basically just bringing my content up to 2019 standards. I'm really looking forward to creating videos for you all again. In approximately two weeks time, the PlayStation Vita scene is set to blow up as well, with the flow releasing his new 3.70 firmware exploits. So I'm definitely planning to cover the PS Vita updates in full as well. And when time permits, I'll go ahead and cover some of the latest Switch scene stuff also. Although I'll be going into more details about the situation with Nintendo in a future upload. I'm still undecided if it's worth me uploading any of my old content back onto YouTube. I've mirrored pretty much anything that might still be useful on BitChute. So maybe it makes more sense to just go ahead and update my older content and upload the updated stuff here. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you guys have opinions on any of this stuff. Apologies, it's been such a long time since my last upload. In fact, this is my first video that I've created this year. I really had to do a lot of reflection and thinking after what happened to me in December. And on that note, I just wanted to say a really huge thank you to some of the other YouTubers in the homebrew space, namely Mr. Mario 2011 and Tech James, who both reached out to me, were super friendly, and helped to put me in touch with all the right people so that I could determine my best options and pathways forward with regards to the YouTube platform. I also wanted to give thanks to Modern Vintage Gamer. He's been running into some similar trouble lately with some very silly strikes coming his way. And yeah, he's doing a good thing by helping raise awareness at some of the glaring flaws that exist in YouTube's three strike removal system, and how it can be abused to the point of being weaponized pretty much. I hope this video finds you well, and even though we are starting fresh here on this channel, I'll make it an early goal to do my best to create the highest quality and most informative tutorials that I can, in hopes of being able to reconnect with as many of my former 40,000 subscribers as possible. It was pretty gutting losing the ability to stay in touch with my subscribers. I know many people have no idea what happened to me, as unfortunately it just happened so suddenly that I had no chance to put out any kind of a message on the YouTube platform at all. It would mean a lot to me if you could check out this video's description, as I've included links to all of my various social media pages in there. These are especially useful as if we do get deplatformed here again, we're still able to keep in touch on those other sites. Also, as I get back into uploading tutorials again, if you could share them around with your interested friends and communities, that would really mean the world to me as it would help notify some of the people who used to be subbed. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, as by doing so, you will have joined the Homebrew Crew. <laughs> have a good one team, much love and peace out.